Welcome to Silver and Black Films presents Tom Cable's Last Chance. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Head coach John Gruden has high praise for offensive line coach Tom Cable. But most of Raider Nation doesn't agree, believing he should be fired. They cite the average of 27th in pass blocking ratings his offensive lines have had over his career. They're also looking at how bad the Raiders offensive line was in 2018 in comparison to how good it was the previous two years. But on the other side of things, you have to look at what he's done with individual players. He turned left tackle bust Robert Gallery into a pretty good guard in his first stint with the Raiders. Then in Seattle, he helped center Max Unger and left tackle Russell Okung become elite players at their respective positions. Gallery and Okung were early first round picks and Unger was a second round pick so the case could be made that Cable could do a good job if given enough talent. That's why I say the jury's still out on Cable. This year Cable will have the most talent he's ever had. So this is his last chance to prove himself as an offensive line coach. That talent starts with the lead center Rodney Hudson, number 61. At 6'2", 300 pounds, his ability to handle those big nasty nose tackles one on one make him special in the running game. That allows his guards to go up to the second level sooner in Cable's zone blocking system. Hudson has the speed, quickness, and agility to get up to that second level quickly himself. And he's as good as they get at center protecting the passer. Here he picks up a stunt and blister so his quarterback, Derek Carr, can get away. Not allowing too much pressure in the quarterback's face is a good thing. At right guard, he'll have 6'3", 335 pound up and comer Gabe Jackson. Jackson is money at the point of attack. He also pulls well. up to the second level that cable system requires. Jackson's also one of the better pass protecting guards in the NFL.
Here he gives Carr a chance to step up and throw with pressure coming from the outside. Then he gives Carr just enough time to throw another dime. If there's an offensive lineman meant to be a Raider, it's 6'4", 325 pound left guard Richie Incognito. He's also money at the point of attack. Look at the violence he plays with. Oh. Get out of here. Navarro Bowman don't want that work trying to blitz. He doesn't allow a lot of pressure up the middle either. Hudson Jackson and Incognito will hold the middle down. Juggernaut 6'8", 380 pound Trent Brown will be at right tackle. Here he puts Joey Bosa and their strong safety on the ground at the same time. It doesn't stop there. He's going to get Khalil Mack on this one. Ford can get this work too because Brown is a road grader in the run game. Here, Matt's gonna get hemmed up. Melvin Ingram's gonna get blown back into the end zone. That just wasn't fair. Speaking of unfair, he's going to remove Bosa from the gap and still push his man into the end zone. Oh, and he protects the passer well. He has no problems with Bosa here. He had no problems with Mac either, holding him to just one tackle at the game. Melvin Ingram, uh-uh. Deep board, man, stop playing. Oh. Not even Mac wants that work. Not once did he try to bull rush him. After doing a great job for Tom Brady and the New England Patriots on the left side, he's going to hold down the right side for the Raiders. At left tackle will be 2018 first round pick Colton Miller. And those are the kind of holes he opened at 6'8", 310.
He's up to 330 now, so he's going to be even more help to rate running backs at the point of attack. And he's so athletic, so pulling and blocking in space will be no problem. And he was pretty good pass blocking at the beginning of the season. He saw 2018 number 5 overall Bradley Chubb in week 2 and didn't give him anything. And he started pretty well against 2018 number 1 overall Miles Garrett. But later in the game, he would injure his knee. And he ended up giving up a sack to Gary. The knee injury would linger and he wouldn't be the same that year as he gave up 13 sacks to leave the NFL. But with his talent, a return to good health could help Cable earn his keep. It is Raider tradition to have a good offensive line. Legendary owner Al Davis built the Raiders on that and the deep ball. That's how they were able to win an AFL championship and go to the Super Bowl in the 60s. The same blueprint won them the Super Bowl after the 1976 season. Raiders also won Super Bowls in 1980 and 1983 with great pass protection and the deep ball. The offensive line the Raiders put together in the early 2000s was nothing to laugh at either. With the skill position players they had, all they did was score points. The end result was the Raiders going to the Super Bowl at the end of the 2002 season. Now with Cable in charge, the Raiders are trying to do something like that again. Four of the five offensive linemen were already considered good players before Cable got here so he won't get credit for them. But if he gets Miller going, he will have earned his key. Thank you for watching and see you next Sunday.